Hi everybody, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. We are reading from Isaiah 52. I'm going to share this real quick before I go any further. I do believe God is going to make things happen. I'm seeing it happen in my life. I believe that there's coming a time where we won't have to pound the table with our fists and and soak our shirts and blouses with our tears. But we'll be able to simply say, Lord, would you please do this? And would you please do that? And would you come through? Would you intervene? Would you rescue? Would you do whatever? Provide whatever it is. And I believe that prayers are going to be answered. Now, I've already given this word years ago that there's coming a time where the saints are going to experience more immediate answers to prayer. As much as the devil is raising his tail and, and, and rattling cages and, and, and wreaking havoc, God is going to raise the bar on the level at, of the level of blessings and not only the amount, but how quickly they come to pass. So, look forward to that. But there are conditions to that. And we're going to go over that in this chapter. So let me go on and just read it. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. So what that sounds like to me is that there's going to be some real spring cleaning going on in the spirit realm with God's people. And some things that have been tolerated are not going to be tolerated any longer because the belts are going to be tightened. The bars are going to be raised and there are going to be higher blessings coming in. So there will also be higher standards of conditions for those blessings. That's what I believe. Number two, shake thy shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. For thus saith the Lord thy, the Lord God, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there, and the Assyrians oppressed them without cause. Now, therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught, that they that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord, and my name continually every day is blasphemed. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. Now, I'm going to stop there for a second. A lot of times, you know, we have seen the, the wicked prevailing. We have seen them making the almighty dollar, getting away with murder, not having to abide by all the rules and regulations that the regular population has to abide by, uh, not being penalized uh, for um, crimes committed that the poor pays for <clears throat> triple and quadruple time. But God is going to raise his hand and he's going to use us as an example. And some of you are going to be able to get in on the wave and some of you will not. And let me share this with you. I'm speaking prophetically. Some of you are going to have to take some serious soaking baths in the spirit realm. You're going to have to cut people out of your life. You're going to have to stay as far away from some of your family members. You're going to have to trash the stinking thinking. You're going to have to mend your ways. You're going to have to make some changes in your life and not be so tolerant 
of some of your little baby pet sins that you think are not a big deal. You're going to have to draw closer to God and begin to learn to recognize his voice, recognize the leading and unctioning and the warning of the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to really get into his word, get around his people. You'll never learn to fly like an eagle if you live your life around turkeys. So you have to raise your own bars. You have to willfully do this. You have to discern. You have to dissect. You have to research. You have to read. You have to search, search out. You have to draw near. You have to acknowledge God in all your ways. So he will direct your path. So this is the time to draw close. We know that we're on the heels of, of the tribulation period. We know that's on its way. But we can go out with a whimper or we can go out with a bang. We want to be blessed. But you have to understand, as we are being blessed, there are going to be extreme negatives going on and extreme positives. Now, if you were a surfer, I would say, which wave do you want to ride? Do you want to ride the world's wave or do you want to ride the designated wave God sends to you to get you from point A to point B to the blessings he has for you here in the land of the living before he raptures us home? Because before the rapture, there's going to be some scary bumps in the road for a lot of Christians. And this is the reason. Because they're not cleaning up their act. I believe God is calling us to a much higher level of holy living. Because he has extended a certain amount of blessings that are on reserve for those that choose to fly as high as possible especially when nobody's looking. You know how we put our best foot forward, our best silverware, our best china when we have company and we're we're entertaining our guests. So the house is cleaner than normal. Everything is in order. Everything smells good, looks good, works good. And then we chill when everybody leaves and we, we go back to normal. That's the normal way of our life. But we have to look at it this way. God is not our guest. God is our host. The earth that we live on is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Psalms 24, if you don't believe it. So we have to honor our host by putting our best foot forward even when we're in our jammies, putting our best foot forward when we are alone in our homes, driving on the freeway, dealing with crazy drivers. We have to put our best foot forward when people are acting ugly to us at the store, at the bank, wherever, in the family. We have to put our best foot forward. This is why. I believe, see, we're going to heaven. But I believe your behavior right in through this last stretch before the rapture is going to also determine how many miraculous blessings happen in your life. So let's raise the bar on ourselves so that God can release more blessings to us because we're going into a scary period. It's going to start looking real scary the closer we get to the tribulation period. Real scary. God would have it that you would be more secure, more settled, more at peace, because he says in his word, at famine thou shalt laugh, at destruction Thou shalt laugh. Wouldn't you rather be laughing than crying? You'd be saved either way. But wouldn't you rather be laughing than crying? That's what I'm asking you. So we have read so far about five verses in Isaiah 52, verse 6. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. 
verse 7. And this is why you need to be about your father's business during this period as well in ministry, any form of ministry. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm. Let me explain what made bare his holy arm means. Picture yourself with long sleeve shirts. And you put your hand on your wrist and you roll that sleeve up and you roll the other sleeve up. Now you have made bare your arms because you're getting ready to get down, baby. That's what he's saying. I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm getting ready to show out. <laughs> you're going to see my hand right in through here. That's what God is saying. All right. Verse 10, the Lord hath made bare his, his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. They shall see the salvation. See, they're going to see evidence that we belong to him. Do you get that, y'all? Do you get that? He's going to, it's like the big brother that walks the little brother to school and the little brother is bullied to death. And the big brother says, I'm going to handle this. This is going to stop today. And when the big brother goes, he doesn't go in his school clothes. He puts on his muscle shirt and he bears his arms so everybody can see how muscular, how big and burly he is. And he walks with his little brother and the little brother is, is still scared and tentative, but the big brother is bold as a lion because he's getting ready to tear up some booty up in there for messing with his brother. That is bearing your holy arm, baby. In essence, I just had to put it in real human terms. So when the little brother gets to the school and the bullies start showing up, the big brother just puts his hands on his, on his waist and looks at them. And he says, you want some of this? And they look all the way up at this big, tall brother and they're like, uh, on second thought, never mind. Mm -hmm. And they scatter like a bunch of little roaches when the light comes on. So, see, God is going to show out for his people in ways that you're not even accustomed to. And you're going to say, I don't even deserve that. Well, we don't deserve salvation for that matter. But God loves us enough. And he did this for us. He sent his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And we're going to experience the abundant living, oh my goodness, in big ways. Yeah, we're going to experience rescue missions from God that we had never been witnessing before. But my question is, to what level do you want to see that? How squeaky clean are you willing to clean your walk up? You cannot tolerate any of the allowances that you have allowed last week, last year, last decade, all your life. There are things you cannot tolerate now. Not if you want the higher level that God has. It's the same as having credit. You want your credit rating to go high. Let's say you're at, at the 600s. I'm trying to do this in human terms to show you what God is doing for us in this period. You got a, a, a 500, you can't even get credit. 600 and something, maybe you can buy a house, maybe you can get a car, okay. But your interest rate is going to be sky high. So the cost of that blessing is going to be Way up there, y'all. Why? Because the credit is not way up there. 
So now you're working at improving your credit. I'm making a point about the Lord. So go with me on this. Now you get up to the, to the high sixes. Okay, now you're getting some more benefits. The interest rates are coming down. Now you get into the 700s. Oh, it's much better now. It's real easy for you to get credit. But then you bounce up to the high 700s, 780 to 800, and it's like, whoa, whoa, things are coming at me now. I'm, I'm getting stuff I'm not even asking for. And then you're in the upper 800s, and wow, the sky's the limit. You can have whatever you want, baby. Well, guess what? That's the way it's going to be walking with the Lord. The higher your holiness level, the higher your holiness level becomes in through here, the less the cost you're going to have to pay on this earth, the higher, the higher, the higher will be the blessings and the abundance that God showers on you. Now, it's not a get rich quick scheme. We're not talking about you do this and God's going to be your vending machine and He's going to just, you, you know, you're going to hit the jackpot at every turn. Everybody has to go through stages. Everybody has to go through challenges. Good things and bad things can happen all at the same time. My point to you is give God your best, y'all. Now is not the time to half step. I remember, I'm going to share this with you. There are times when Satan knows that God's got you set up for a blessing. Listen to this carefully. Knowing that he's got you set up for a blessing, he will send all kinds of forms of interference. Now, if you want a child to be distracted from a classroom activity, you have somebody come on the side of the school with a big old wagon full of candy and ice cream. That kid's liable to forget he's in, in class, forget the teacher's talking. He hears the jingle outside and you're going to run to the window to see what's going on. And the teacher might have been saying the exact thing that was going to be on the final. The exact thing that was that they needed to get an A on that test. But they're distracted by the little trinket that's being held outside that window. Their focus is not what's going on outside the window. They should focus on the class. I'm, I'm having a hard time with this because I'm trying to illustrate it in a way that you see it, but not in an indicting way. So Satan's trinkets can come in the form of a woman, a man, money, entertainment, your social gatherings, your activities, and we know what romance can take us to. We know that. We know how far romance can go. We know how far people can get when they start gambling. Like, uh, like one of the brothers in the class was talking about how he knew a guy he gambled one time, one time, never had gambled all his life. And the one time he gambled, he lost everything, flew back home, got his wife's ring, took the car, drove up. I mean, he was so caught up that, and he got every dime he could gather up and went back and lost everything, lost the car, lost the wedding ring, lost the house. So what I'm saying is Satan knows just what to bring across your line of vision right at the precipice of your blessing or right at the precipice of the season of your blessing. And he will have you so sidetracked that every time a blessing is headed your way, you missed it because you're over there with her and you're smooching in the back in the corner in the dark. You may not be having sex, but that's not where your time is to be spent because God wants you with him 
so that he can download to you all the things he wants you to begin doing. But you're too busy over here with your trinket, with your play toy. So you're missing what God is saying. Who are you spending most of your time with, y'all? Are you over there pulling the one-armed bandit all day and all night? Every time you get a little extra change, you back up there losing it? What are you doing with your time? Are you spending all day in front of the TV? Soap after soap opera after soap opera. They may not have the old fashioned ones they used to. Oh, but they got new ones that'll keep you just as hooked, baby. And your nose is wide open to that idiot box. And you can't drop it because you got to see what so and so's going to do when, when such and such happens. You're caught up. That's your drug of choice. Some of you men and women are hooked on the internet and you're not just hooked on selfies and blogs. You're hooked on porn and you just can't leave those body parts alone. You're looking from, from one, from one nut to the next nut. You don't know what to do with yourself, but you're missing out on the blessings because Satan has your nose wide open over here. He's got your attention, baby. God does not. So what I'm saying is just like the credit rating, you got to work at raising your credit level high. You got to work at it. You got to strategize to benefit from having an 800 to 850 credit line. Well, you have to benefit by working at a holy life, getting your walk, your talk, your side time, your every day, your alone time, everything you do, everything you think, not only what you say, but what you think, everything you do has to be lined up as much as you can with holiness. Why? Because God has some reserves for you. But as long as your hands are full, you can't hold any more. You can only hold so much. And Satan will strategize for you to be inundated for your arms, for your hands, for your life to be full of crap. So full that you cannot receive the blessings from God. Don't let them trick you like that. Don't let them play you like that. Some of you, you think because you're not in the sack with somebody that you're okay. You think because you're not uh, gambling your money, you're okay. You think because you're not out there committing, uh, uh, buying dope, selling dope, using dope, you're okay. No, baby. Some of you spend Spend, spend, emotionally spend. You go to the grocery. You go to the, uh, the, the, the retail market. You're out there buying this and buying that and buying this and buying that and buying this and buying that. And you're walking up from mall to mall to mall to mall. Why? Because you can't get enough. You got to get more and more and more. You're so hooked on shopping till you're dropping that you're missing on what God has for you because your time and your money is consumed. So what I'm trying to say is attention, everybody. God's getting ready to move. Are you going to be in line for what he has? Or are you going to be so far out of bounds that you miss out? And when the tribulation gets closer and closer, you're going to feel the sting because all the padding God had to make your life easier as you approach it, you missed out on. So now you got to taste the bitter pill and hope and pray you make it when the rapture comes. Hope and pray you don't get left behind for being so inundated with the cares of this world. Inundated. 
with the habits of your flesh. You've got to clean up, line up, and as the old song says, straighten up and fly right. This is the time to straighten up and fly right. Because if you don't straighten up, you ain't flying nowhere, baby. Trust me on that. You're going to be right here on the ground with the rest of the turkeys. So, let me finish reading. <clears throat> Verse 11, depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from hence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear reward. He's in front of you and behind you. He's got you covered on all sides. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many as were astonished at thee, his, that means astonished. His visage was marred more than any man in his form, more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle the nations. The king shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see. Oh boy, they're going to see stuff happening, y'all. And that which they had not heard shall they consider. See, God's going to put a, there's going to be a, 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 oh boy. There's going to be a, a target on you. God's got one and the devil's got one. Because God's target on you is to bless your socks off. He's going to heal you on the inner man. That's why a lot of you are so messed up because you won't spend the time with him to get over your little idiosyncrasies. You get angry real quick. You got a short temper. You got emotional issues. You're nervous. You're uptight. You can't sleep well. You're frustrated. You're so easily rattled. Yeah. You live in fear. You live in anxiety. You got anxiety attacks. You got all these things going on. Why? You don't have to have any of that being in God because he's got the peace that passes all understanding, y'all. He's got inner healing that removes all those nervous tics, all those weird idiosyncrasies, all that bipolar crap. All your nervous energy, all the jitters, all your emotional upheavals, all that can be gone. But all that comes, all the benefit of, of his healing comes by spending time with him, pouring your heart out to him, not going to the store and buying that drink so you can calm your nerves. Because that drink ain't going to do nothing for the emotional scars, baby. It's nothing but a Band-Aid. Band-Aids fall off. They're temporary. God's inner healing is permanent. God's inner strength and fortitude is permanent. God's peace is permanent. The way that you give up your peace is by allowing sin into your life. Mm-hmm. The things you tolerate, the things you allow yourself. When the Bible says mortify the deeds of the flesh, you can refuse to get angry, y'all. Now, you may not be able to control your emotions, but guess what? I know who can. And when you can't control them, take a minute to say, Lord, take the anger out. Take the fear away. I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke anger. I rebuke wrath. I forsake wrath. Like your word says in Psalms 37. If God says forsake wrath, that means you are well able to do that very thing. Why aren't you? Why are you so quick to get rattled? Why are you so quick to get upset? 
frustrated, ticked off. You can barely take this. You can barely take that. Why? Something's missing. Because God says he will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. But the problem is your focus. See, there are conditions to these blessings, that abundant life that Jesus promised us. He didn't just give us life. He gave us that and more abundantly. It's like going through life with a raincoat, a painkiller, a, a, a bodyguard, going through life with, um, with uh, immune boosters. Uh, just You just don't have to be shaken. The earth can be quaking, but you can be laying there sleeping like a baby. Going through your life that way. It doesn't mean you're not going to shed a tear. It doesn't mean you're not going to get upset. But the emotions will not rule over you. Because as soon as you feel that dander rising, that's time to hand it over to God. You ever play hot potato? They throw the ball to you. You get it off your hands and toss it to somebody else real quick. Imagine somebody throwing a hot pot and you've got to literally take that pot and get it out the window for whatever reason. Just picture it with me. When they toss that hot pot, if you hold it, it's going to burn you. And that's what life does. It burns you a lot because you're holding it. You're holding the negative experience. You're holding the anger. You're holding the, the resentment. <clears throat> You're holding the bitterness. You're holding the unforgiveness. You're holding all of these memories, these bitter memories that you've had since you were a child. You're holding it. You're rehearsing it. You're studying it. It's burning you. Let it go. Devil throws it at you. You toss it out the window. You can touch something and get off of it quick enough for it not to really burn you. It may leave a blister, but it can't harm you. But too many of you, when they, when the devil throws crap at you, you hold it. And what God is saying is casting. Just like you take that pot and toss it out the window. He throws it at you. You almost bounce it off your hand through the window. Just like you do a volleyball. You don't hold the volleyball. You pass it. And that's what you have to do. You have to pass this crap that Satan throws at you. Pass it to God. Because the emotions you cannot control, God can. Casting all your care on him. For he cares for you. Cast all of it, baby. Come on. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are, are laden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. See, that's why he wants us to take his yoke upon us. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But y'all are carrying burdens. You're carrying burdens of your neighbor's funky attitude. You're carrying burdens of your mama, your papa being mad at you. You're carrying burdens of your boyfriend getting ticked and walking away and not wanting to talk on the phone with you all night. You're, 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 you're carrying burdens of, of trying to please this woman and trying to please that woman, trying to impress this crowd, trying to impress your boss, trying to impress your landlady, <clears throat> landlord, whatever. You're carrying unnecessary burden, worrying about what they think about you. What did he say about you? What did she say about you? They lying on me. You letting your days be ruined by other people's nonsense. Instead of saying, Lord, I know I'm immature. I know I'm silly. And I know I shouldn't let this stuff get to me, but it does. Would you take it out right now? I do not want to waste my emotion. You want to go through your life leaning on God more than you ever have because he'll take the sting out of it if you let him. 
unless you want to sit there and hold it. So again, we're back to raising that bar in every area of your life. How you lean on God, how you live holy, how you discern, how you acknowledge him in all your ways. You have got how you wait on him when you want to act like right now and God gives you a scripture that says, wait, you better wait. Because in the waiting comes the blessing. Not in your acting, not in your reacting, but in the waiting on the Lord comes the blessing. So remember, trust God in every area of your life. Even if it means you got to break up from that girlfriend of yours. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to rub them boobs like you used to. You don't need to. You need to be rubbing that Bible, opening those pages and seeing what God says about your life. Let him, as your spiritual father, speak his blessing into your life, and then you read it out loud so the blessings can ignite. And walk in holiness. Holiness. See, we're saved by grace. Yes, we're in the dispensation of grace. And our salvation is based on grace and faith. We believe, we receive, we believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah, all of that that goes with that package deal. But guess what? Now it's time to live it. And you can decide the level of your life by how you live it out. Now, I'm getting ready to close, but I want you to reconsider one thing. Some of you need to some of you need to recommit yourself to the Lord. You need to cut some family members out of your life for a long time, some permanently. You got to cut some, some folks out of your life permanently. You got to cut some activities out of your life, some forms of entertainment out of your life. You got to die to the flesh, mortifying the deeds of the flesh because you do not want to miss it. Listen, if I want to catch a bus and that bus is going to get me to where I'm going to, somebody's got some money for me, but I got to get there by a particular time to get there. I'm going to catch that bus two or three hours early. If I got to sit there and wait for them to show up, I'm going to be there one way or another. Now, for those of you who live a careless life, you might miss that bus because you're so busy talking to your girlfriend on that phone, or you're so busy flirting with the teller at the bank, or you're so busy trying to impress your boss with all that you know about what you're doing on the job so he can promote you to assistant manager, to manager, to head supervisor. You've got your, your sights high on that job, but you got a deadline and you got to get somewhere. And the boss is talking and he's talking so long, you're going to end up missing that bus. And if you miss the bus, you're going to miss out on that money. So my question to you is, are you going to miss the bus? You're going to miss the bus all your life? You're going to always miss that bus? Huh? Mm, mm, mm. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Just think about it now. It's time to draw close to the Lord because this is going to be a season of tremendous blessings in the middle of tremendous tragedies. So you can either laugh at destruction like the Bible says you be doing. You can laugh at famine like the Bible says you be doing. Or you can cry because you're holding stuff too long. Your choice. Amen. <laughs>